Well, greetings. This is Arthur Blossett, and I welcome you to Breakfast Lunch with Jesus, uh, actually with uh, no food. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, out with the cross. I've uh, been carrying the cross, and today, on purpose, I did not eat breakfast, and I didn't take any water with me. So I am actually hungry and thirsty and tired as I've been walking with the cross. I look kind of fresh because there's a wind blowing. So please pardon us if it's difficult to hear. But it's road life, right? It's life on the road with Jesus. And we're going to be discussing it something really tremendous about Christ and about uh, his uh, life on the road. And I think it will be very enlightening to every person. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm Arthur Blessed and I've been carrying the cross around the world. This is the 50th year. God willing, this time next week, we will be in uh, Panama. And I've been talking with AT&T about live streaming and things. So I think we're going to be able to do some live streaming from uh, Panama. And I know we will when we get to a place where we can pick up Wi-Fi. And uh, But we'll be going back into the jungles where I walk through the Darien jungle. Uh, a bit of that, it'll just be uh, uh, going back and letting uh, Denise and Sophia uh, experience that witness. And so we'll be uh, getting an interpreter down there and, uh, and we will go out and we'll be carrying the cross. And we'll be also in the city and there will be masses of people about Jesus that you never saw before, you, you never thought of before. And so just get ready, uh, get your notepad out. But the wonderful thing is that whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or Periscope or Twitter, you can just go back to the last program or whatever. Or you can replay it and take your notes there. Uh, this is I, I went to uh, uh, college uh, and had a, a, a major that, uh, in Bible and speech, but Bible, and then went on to seminary. But I've studied the road, the road Bible, and and I look at the at, at our today's uh, teaching and in Greek, and uh, and so we're going to and look at the commentaries and. 
and my own experience, a lot of people uh, that are theologians, and they're great, I'm not critical at all, but they haven't walked around the world. And, and so the physical aspect of Jesus is very important as we see his witness most of the witness of Jesus that we find of great of his teachings was was when he met people out walking and talking and and I mean in the last days I've had people running to the cross uh, and you can see a person who came running to the cross weeping and kneeling at the cross uh, on on Twitter and uh, Facebook for sure and on Instagram well I hadn't put it on Instagram on blessed.com you can see one of those pictures but just yesterday a man ran across the street and he'd been searching to find an answer to 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 the assurance of Christ and he prayed and gave his heart to Jesus and we, we were just, we, we, I've just been having the greatest time ever, I'm telling you. And then I've been studying on this, I did last night, I did this morning, and then I went out carrying the cross, and I am thirsty and I'm hungry, but I wanted to experience that in relationship with teaching this, okay? John, the fourth chapter, we pick up, well, I'll back up one verse. And Jesus, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. So Jesus is traveling. But the only instance we have of Jesus riding anything was when he rode into Jerusalem on the donkey, which was only, we don't know, but only a mile or two or three at the most coming into Jerusalem. Uh, and that was the week of the Passion. So Jesus was walking, and on blessed.com, I have actually, and maybe someday I'll, I'll do a message on this, but I've, I've, I've verified from the Bible the miles Jesus walked and the miles Mary walked. So just go to blessed.com and type in miles jesus walked or miles mary walked and it'll take you right to that page okay but anyway jesus walked almost the distance around the world at the equator and it, that's profound but anyway here we go and and then verse four and he that's jesus he needed to go through samaria now Jesus was in Judea, which was the uh, the main part of a, a of the Jewish uh, gathering of people that mostly the Jews lived in Judea, and it included Jerusalem and that area, and then of course there was Galilee up there, and and Samaria was the area in between, and generally speaking what we call today the the West Bank uh, and the Palestinians and so uh, they then they were called the Samaritans and Jesus uh, the Bible said I must needs go through Samaria and that word need means must. Jesus was saying, I must go in this direction. Now, going through Samaria was the shortest distance between Jerusalem and Galilee and Nazareth and all of those cities up there, the Sea of Galilee. But most of the Jews did not go through uh, Samaria. They, they either went down to Jericho and across the Jordan and down and went around the area of the Samaritans because there was so much uh, tension and even hatred between the groups. Or they would go over to the 
clear the Mediterranean Sea and go up that way and make a big loop around. So it was really radical that Jesus would say, I need, and the word also means necessary. Jesus was saying it was necessary for him to go through Samaria. said he didn't do anything except what the father told him to do or say to do and so the, when the Lord tells you to do something then you need to do it and so Jesus said I must need it is necessary that I go this direction and I have found in my life that there are many times many people who are saying to me don't go there don't do this do this this is what your mission is turn the crosswalking over to the young people and and uh, it, you've done your you've you're in the Guinness Book of Records over 42,000 miles walking with the cross let somebody know you have to do what Jesus is telling you to do and like I I felt him tell me last night and I told Denise this morning, I said, I've been preaching all night, me and Jesus. But I felt that Jesus said, wait, don't get up at breakfast time and do breakfast with Jesus. Wait until noon and you'll see why in just a moment. But, and then go out and walk so that you have some tiredness and don't take any water and, and don't eat a breakfast and so that that you'll be hungry and 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 that is just uh i don't know just a little side bit to what we're talking about today and uh that jesus said i must needs and and i have if i've had any major conflicts really in life in a sense it's it's even where religious people are are, are trying to get me to involved in something that is outside of pure soul winning. My dear friends, I'm a follower of Jesus, and he said go and preach the gospel in every nation, and by his grace I've done that, but not to every person. They keep getting bored, and not every person has heard me, but I've gone. And, and so it is necessary for me to invite people to know Jesus to share the truth of the Word of God, the Bible, and to speak the message of Jesus. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So, he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. It was 1977. And I was carrying the cross all around where Jesus had carried, I mean, had walked and preached and taken the message of him being the Messiah and the Savior. And that was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was again with the major walk in, in Israel from Jerusalem to Cairo in 1980. I did that walk. And then in 1982, I carried the cross from uh, Beirut, during the war in Beirut, and down to Jerusalem, and went through Tyre and Sidon in that area. So this, and, and it, I was going through Samaria, I was going through the West Bank, and of course, I was studying the Bible and I had a Bible book that told me all the scriptures in every place mentioned in the Bible 
and I would read at night and in the day when I would sit down and rest or whatever uh, where I was going next and I realized that that I was going to arrive in Sychar at Jacob's well uh, at late in the evening well people were coming to the cross and people were stopping their cars and buses were stopping and I had a great witness but I wound up it was dark and I was still hadn't got to Jacob's well and I arrived at Jacob's well after dark and and the the gates were shut there is a, a, a religious group that has uh, I forget what Christian group it is that has actual control they have priests there uh, ministers there but it was shut and I shook and hollered and finally one of the men walking by he said you know what are you doing and I showed I mean the cross was with me I said I'm trying to get in I want to spend the night at Jacob's well and he said oh I know a back way in so he said I'll go back and tell them and he went in told them and the priest came out and they saw me with the big cross and they were excited and happy and welcomed me in and and took me there to uh, see Jacob's well. They said, we'll really do give you the kind of tour in the morning, but you're welcome to spend the night here and they had a place and uh, like, uh, like for guests of the menace of, of the other priests that came in. I spent the night there and the next day, as they explained and I won't go into all the physical aspect of it, but it's, it's it, it, it's an awesome experience to lower the bucket down and bring up the water and drink the water from Jacob's well, the same well. There are many things in the Bible that you can say in this general area, a certain thing happened. Like we could know the valley where uh, David and Goliath fought, but you don't you don't know the exact spot. We know Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, and even though there are churches there that say this is the exact spot, we really don't know. But we know that area. But one thing that you can be sure of is Jacob's well. It, it is Jacob's well. <laughs> and historically now for thousands of years and there's still water that you can drink now here is a verse that is going to be very provocative for many of us today and that is verse 6 now Jacob's well was there Jesus therefore being weary from his journey sat thus by the well and it was about the sixth hour now isn't this awesome this is awesome revelation of how that the Bible declares in the first of John in the beginning of was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and everything that was made by him I mean everything that was made was made by him and without him was nothing made that was made the eternal God the Father Son Jesus and the Holy Spirit here Jesus now as we know from uh, the scripture but the birth of Christ the word became flesh Jesus was all total God divine yet he was absolutely human in the flesh and his flesh got tired he had been traveling from somewhere in Judea on his way to Galilee and he's now stopped at Jacob's well and he's weary he is tired and and 
his uh, demeanor meant that that he he was exhausted from the long walk and when I can't hardly wait till we get to where he says give me to drink because I've got my water here uh, so yeah there it is I hadn't had any water to drink uh, this morning I for those of you who just came in I didn't eat or I didn't drink this morning uh, so, and I've been walking with the cross so that I could experience some of the tiredness, the thirst, and the hunger that, that Jesus himself, from a journey, now he was walking, and he came to the well, and there are, because of the proximity of the water and things, there probably were some shade trees. That's why I said under the shade tree, because the filming would be better because the cameras would get too hot in the sun. It's now summertime here in the Colorado, so the, the heat could cause the phones to go off before I have three iPhones here running uh, uh, before the program was over. So Jesus was weary and thus he was weary from his journey it's okay to get tired uh to get exhausted this flesh gets exhausted sometimes does yours i mean you you do something and especially as you get older you you can feel it uh and and i'm 77 but i've got friends and and uh, you know that are in their 40s and then they're in their 50s I've got children in their 50s and and uh, and they're starting to feel aches and pains they that you do something you used to do all the time but now you do it and you hurt all day <laughs> and you're exhausted you used to could run and and just do all kind of stuff and you felt great and Jesus was tired he was weary it, it, that, that word has the connotations of, of more than just just a, a little temporary exhaustion he, he was weary Whew. that area uh, is uh, low mountainous it is hilly and so when they would have been walking up and down and the trails up and, and down and it's a, a fairly high altitude and so the exhaustion of the trip was Jesus was tired I am Last night I went back into some of my photos and I I looked at some of the photos where people took of me and then somehow I got them or they, they gave them to me or whatever and and in one of the photos I'm sitting in like a shop uh, and there are people everywhere their their faces are almost touching mine they're just you, you can probably see 50 people in the picture and me sitting in a chair and i am asleep <laughs> i am asleep i was weary and exhausted and i had been i shared christ with them and everything but now i was, I was exhausted in the heat of the day i was asleep i have a another picture where I, I'm leaning on the cross just to give me some support. I was so tired, tired, tired. And I was in my younger days. I have another picture taken in 1978 uh, going into the Darien jungle down to in Panama where we're going to be going back. This time next week we'll be there. And I, I was I was laying down on the side of the road sound asleep in the middle
middle of the day in the sun, nothing over my face. I was, I was passed out to sleep, exhausted, weary. Jesus got tired. His body was weak. They needed food. They, they needed water to drink. The necessities of life, uh, he had, he was without. Uh, now, being a traveling guy myself, I was, I was, I, I've been thinking, why in the world with those 12 disciples, wasn't somebody carrying plenty of water, and why didn't they have plenty of food uh, that they could have carried for several days, bread, things like that. But I don't know, I, I don't know, and Jesus, listen, this is really, I don't know, I was really blessed when I read that, I was reading this last night, but here's what I was thinking about. Remember Jesus turned water into wine. Jesus multiplied loaves and fishes. Uh, he did creative miracles. He could have just said water, and water would have come gushing out of the rock. God did that for Moses when he was in the wilderness. And, and he provided manna from heaven that would just fall and they'd be there on the ground. The Father could have could have fed him and given him drink. Jesus could have asked for it. The angels would have delivered it to him like they did when he fasted for 40 days. But he didn't even ask for the miracle that he could have had. He was, he endured the tiredness and the exhaustion and the suffering and needing provision. Okay, that, that is profound and it was about the sixth hour. This means that we don't know if he was used, if John was using Jewish time uh, or Roman time. But I could give you a lot of reasons why I believe that it was the uh, the Roman time. The, uh, I mean, but it was it was the sixth hour. It was basically it, if it was the sixth hour, it would have been noon, and that's why I started this program today almost at 12 o'clock in Denver time. Uh, I wanted to, to, I don't know, I just wanted to keep it as much as I could to experience a little more taste of what he was going through. So Jesus is walking on the journey, going to God, next verse that the disciples went to get some food, to buy some food in Sychar. So Jesus was thirsty and hungry. And, and this all makes sense now in a minute when we get to the water. Uh, and a woman, now Jesus is sitting there. We don't know if he's sitting on a rock or if he's sitting on a tree or, or whatever, but he sat down. Usually when you get tired and your feet are aching and uh, you want somewhere to sit down and I have this chair that folds up that's in the back of the car and I've driven out to carry the cross, which I did this morning, and then come back to the car and I got the cross out and the tripods out and I'm sitting down and it feels so good because my feet are tired and and uh, and my knees are uh, doing their thing and uh, and I'm thirsty and I am hungry and Jesus saw a woman of Samaria came to draw water now remember 
even if it was a Jewish lady, uh, in those days, the, the Jews didn't have interaction uh, with the Samaritans. And, and, and with a woman, there, there were all kinds of barriers, and we won't get into that, uh, of, of the culture of where men were not talking with women most of the time. And, and, and so it was very, very radical that Jesus would be in Sychar at the well at Jacob's well with a Samaritan woman. And we find out a little later that she must have had a very bad reputation because she had had five husbands in that day and time and she was the one she was with. Uh, uh, so she was with, with, with six men we know of for sure. And, um, and, and so this kind of woman this Jewish man, Jesus, uh, I mean, it was, it was radical for her and for any Jew that might be around and all the Samaritans. And it said that, that she was a Samaritan. And, uh, and when the woman of Samaria, then the woman of Samaria said to him, I mean, he said, uh, Jesus said to her, give me a drink. He asked something of her. And this is so profound. It, 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 it is so wonderful. He, he asked, quote unquote, a sinner woman to give him a drink of water. And, and this amazed this lady. Here's what she said. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. So the 12 disciples had left Jesus alone at the well. They hadn't drawn any water. And, and I mean, that, that baffles me. Why didn't they draw the water and give Jesus something to drink, but no, they rush off into town to buy some food. They're hungry. And so he is trying to, they're trying to get all the food together. And, and so the woman said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. There are, there are so many Christians, quote unquote Christians, believers, that don't want to have anything to do with somebody that has an appearance of, of being sinful or, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I don't know. The first memory I have of my dad was when he came back from World War II and being in, in a bar and, and I was watching the bubbles go around the jukebox as I saw my dad setting over. I was four years old. Uh, we need to be insulated, not isolated from the world of people that are themselves of reputation now there's almost everything you can do and somebody agrees with you and there, there, there are very few wrong things but the bible said there are a lot of things that are wrong but as he's saying ask me you're a Jew what you asking me for to give you water and Jesus said unto her if you knew the gift of God wow and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Now, we know that Jesus knows.
knows everything. And in those days, the Bible said he knew what was at the heart of every person. When Jesus was weary and tired and sat down, hungry and thirsty, and let his disciples go into, into the city to get food, he knew that that woman was going to arrive. And, and Jesus, being tired and weary, suddenly is invigorated. <laughs> uh, it didn't seem to matter that he was tired anymore. I tell you, there is nothing that is more wonderful for a follower of Christ than to be tired and weary, hungry and thirsty, and have somebody come up and need Jesus. Suddenly you come on fire. And that's what happened to Jesus. Jesus is sitting there probably with his head down. And we, we, he wasn't depressed or anything, but he was weary and hungry and thirsty. And, and, uh, and now, there's a woman, a woman with a bad reputation that he knew all about. And he starts talking to her, and now he's, he's, he's invigorated. He's on fire. He's speaking. He's helping. He's got a mission, a purpose. It, it, it's incredible. And I, there have been times when I have been so exhausted, so tired. I was I would look up I'd see that hill or that mountainside up there and I that's that's where I'm headed today. I, I, and then somebody comes up at a bus stop or they're or stop a vehicle or they're working by the road or something. Somebody appears, they run out of a house and they say, What are you doing? And, you're, and I'm, I'm so tired, and I say, well, I'm carrying the cross for Jesus, and I start smiling, and joy floods my soul, and I, because I'm sharing the good news, we get that from Jesus. We get that from Jesus, because he's now, he, where is this hunger? Where is this thirst? He's now looking at her soul. I tell you, dear friends, I've been, I've been with the starving, I've been with the hungry, I've been with the thirsty, I've, I've been with a world in need and seen it and experienced it. But there is nothing more important than seeing a person saved, their soul saved for eternity. See, Jesus cared about not only a person's need at the moment. He does care about the need at the moment. He healed the sick. He even raised the dead. But he didn't raise all the dead. He raised some of the people who died. He, he didn't feed all of Israel and all of Samaria. He fed people who, the 5,000 who were there when he was preaching the gospel and they were hungry and they were fainting and and they needed help and so we find that that Jesus was concerned about the person the person there was someone with me yesterday on our crosswalk that walked with me and we one a wonderful friend and he does this periodically every three months or so we get together and and, and he, he we walk and we talk and we go through theology and everything as we're walking and then people come come out of their house they stop their car they they come up and he observed yesterday he said author you're single-minded uh, you're focused on the person and sharing Jesus, that they meet the Lord, and that person knows you care. They they can see you care. They know you care. That that's your purpose. That's your mission. That is what he's interested in. 
is you, is me, and, and our relationship with God, where will we spend eternity? And so he said, if you understood who it was, see, the important thing is who is Jesus? We have behind me the cross. And many of you know that Jesus died on the cross. But there were, in history, hundreds of thousands of people who died on the crosses. But none of them do we pray to except one. And that is Jesus. What makes the crucifixion of Jesus different from the crucifixion of the other two thieves that died the day that Jesus died on the cross. It is who he is. Divine. God in the flesh. Sinless. Holy. Pure. The Messiah. The Savior of the world. And so that makes all... If you knew who it was, you'd ask him and he'd give you living water living water what is living water the woman said to him sir you have nothing to draw with since you you don't have a bucket you don't have a rope you don't have anything to lower down into the well and and the well is deep where then do you get that living water and, and, and so then, are you greater than Jacob, than Father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself? I mean, he's one of the great men of, uh, of you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, I mean, on and on. One of the great names, even to those Samaritans, as well as his sons and his livestock drank from this. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I give him will never thirst. But the water that I give him will become in him a fountain of water springing or gushing up unto everlasting life. Oh, Wow, that is the water that will satisfy you. That is why that many of you that have stayed out of work so long, so you get to listen to this message. That's why many of you are are uh, are staying on so long. Your soul is thirsty. Well, as I said earlier, I didn't drink any water uh, this morning out with the cross, and I'm thirsty. So that's the appropriate time for me to drink some water. Hmm. Ah, wow. Give me another one. <laughs> I didn't, I uh, just have one. That, that's, I'm still thirsty and I just drank that. But, uh, see, you drink this water and you get thirsty again. You need a, another bottle. Uh, I either got to drive home and uh, after we get it, or I've got to go to a store down here somewhere and buy some more water before I keep walking with the cross, but does I want to, it's, it's hot. But this water, you have to drink more and more and more, right? But when you drink of Jesus, Jesus, the living Lord, the savior of the world, the water of life, come into my heart, cleanse me from my sins, fill me with your glory and presence, you will never thirst. When I was seven years old, I drank the living water. Until that time, I was in the grace of God that he has for the children and that covers those uh, 
the, uh, the, the sins that we uh, derive from our being the passing on of our sin nature. But at seven, when I felt convicted that I was a sinner, that I had failed, I, I, I was lost probably about 30 minutes. And, and I won't go into my conversion experience, but then an evangelist led me to Christ in a parking lot. And I received Jesus that night as a seven-year-old boy, barefooted with Big Mac overalls in a parking lot in Louisiana, and Jesus saved me. And I've never thirsted for the living water since then. I've had great thirst. I've had to drink out of muddy holes of water in the jungles and on the roadsides of the world. I've had to write, scrape back the green scum on top of water and drink that muddy water with wiggly stuff in it. You know, those mosquito things. I, I hope they were just only mosquitoes, but never got sick from any of those things in all the journey around the world. But anyway, I look at that and, you, and I have to kind of close my eyes and dip my canteen down in it or water bottle and fill it up and just drink it down. So I was eating and drinking at the same time. But, uh, but you, you thirst and many of you in your heart, you, you are just, you, you can hardly make it. And I get emails from people who go to blessit.com and it is this contact author. And, and, and I have direct communication from people who never make comments on any of our social media sites. Uh, or they've made comments, but now they want to open up. And some of them, I tell you, are, are hurting so bad. And many of you probably are listening right now, are watching. And, and, and you, you just don't know if you can make it through the day. Uh, whether you can, I, I, I get these and, 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 and some of them, I, I, I mean, it's just people are in pain in the heart, the thirst, the hunger. I can never be happy. I'll never make it. I'll never find my purpose. I'll never find anyone to love me. I, I can't, my, my pain is too great. Pain in my heart, pain in my body. I'm wore out, I'm weary, I'm, I'm exhausted. Jesus says, I'll give you living water, living water. And the woman said, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to dry. Draw. I tell you, there are many wonderful people, and I've God bless them all that are that are you know uh, raising money, and then they're going. They have a, a a project of water wells, and and different and in poor countries where they have contaminated water, and and if anybody cares about them, I do, because I've lived with them, I've been with them, I've drank what they're drinking, I've seen how they have to carry the water for miles on their head and buckets and and oh i care don't get me wrong but i tell you i care about the water of life jesus that that woman carrying that water she needs a water well near her house she needs good clean water to drink but she needs jesus too that will satisfy the thirst of her heart because when death comes to the rich and those who have all the substance they could ever imagine and a person who starves to death or thirst, face God and are your sins forgiven. Do what did you do with Jesus? Have you drank of the living water? So that, that is what she says. Uh, sir, give me this water that I not come here. Now, our time is up. We're going to stop at that verse 15, and we'll start next week, uh, either before we leave for Panama or after I'm down in Panama, verse 16.
And then that's when Jesus leads her and reveals to her that he is the Messiah, the Savior. She believes in him and she goes and tells the people in Sychar uh, that, that, that the Messiah is here. And then Jesus, uh, they, they stay there for a couple of days. They have a revival meeting. They, and a revival meeting there was an evangelistic crusade. You have Jesus evangelizing, that woman evangelizing and leading people to believe that he's the Messiah and drinking the living water. So I want to ask you right now, are you tired of bearing your own sins, of being, feeling the guilt of the failure that you have in your life, of, of the consequence of your sins, and the realization that you're going to face the judgment bar of God? Are you prepared? Have you drunk of the living water? Not just the earthly water, but the living water. You can pray to Jesus right now and he'll say, he'll change your life. He'll give you this living water. That no matter what you face, you can have joy and peace in your heart because Christ died for your sins. your soul will fill your heart will give you the power and the glory to live on for him in joy and in happiness so god bless you so richly those of you that receive christ get your bible or go buy a bible or, or go to a website that's got uh like bible hub that has got all many versions of the Bible and, and, uh, and, and get in some uh, some good Word of God teaching from a church that is preaching from the Bible and teaching and you're learning something and getting strong in the Lord. But this thirst now that you had, say thank you Lord to have a living water. And whenever I'm going through these struggles Those of you that are followers of Christ, get the heartbeat of Jesus, and that is to give to people the living water and the living bread, and that satisfies the soul that cleanses us from our sin. So people need you to witness to them, to share the gospel with them. We can pray for the world, but Jesus has already gone to the cross and died for the sins of the world. Now we as believers are to go and tell. He has commissioned us to go into all the world 
and preach the gospel to every creature, to every person. So I pray that you will look for every opportunity. My friend and I yesterday, when we got back to our vehicles from our wonderful crosswalk and glorious things happening for the Lord and our fellowship, we were we had, we had drank our water. We were we were thirsty, uh, and uh, and and hungry even yesterday at noon. And uh, and he saw the side of a restaurant that was just. I'm like a hundred yards from where we had parked. And he said, let's go there and get something to, to drink and a, and a snack. Uh, Cause he had to go back to work. And um, so we went in there and, and, the, and the waitress came up and I immediately reached in, I had already reached in my pocket and, um, and had in this pocket and handed her one of our um, uh, palm of the hand cards and a gospel track. Uh, and this is the palm of the hand uh, and God says, see, I will not forget you. I carved you in the palm of my hand. And, um, and when I handed that to that lady, um, she her whole countenance, everything changed. She she grabbed it with both hands and said, "Thank you. I'll keep this." And um, and I and I and I said to her, "I said, do you know Jesus in your heart? Do you die? Do you have the assurance you'd go to heaven? Listen, you don't have to go into a big warm up of." all kind of relationships in order to talk to somebody about Christ. If you're happy, if you're blessed, if they feel and know you love them and the Holy Spirit's convicting, and and she said, yes, I do. And she was, she was, she said, I, I received Jesus when I was a child and I, and I, uh, I, I went to some Baptist church down in Texas and now I'm up here, and and uh, and I'm looking for a church. <laughs> and uh, so my friend told him where her, his church was, and I told him uh, the churches around where I live, and where the area where she lived, and and um, and we just kept having well, so much. She would come back and share what she was in, she was in nursing school and she was taking her test today so pray that she passes her nursing exam uh, to be a registered nurse and then she's going on to graduate school everything else do you care for the person they may be a believer they may not know the lord but listen if you share Jesus and love and in kindness and care, our thought is to be on a person's eternity. When I meet people, that's what's on my mind. Where will you spend eternity? I encourage those of you who know Christ to ask the Lord to lead you as to where to go and who to talk to and and Maybe you need just a little help, and, and, and I have Jesus stickers and gospel tracts and things on our website and the store and where, where, where mission groups are going out all over the world and they're ordering Jesus stickers and things like that. And, and, and it's just a little starter point. Or you don't have to, but I like with that lady, she just opened up and changed everything. And she was back over talking to the other waitresses and whatever. On and on it goes, Jesus loves you. Share him with others. May the love of God and the grace of Jesus be with you now and forever. Pray for Arthur and Denise and Sophia on our trip uh, just days from now to Panama. Get this turned off here. Um, and...